Hey everyone, my name is Carly Hall and I am so glad that you are joining me in this video today because we are talking about the Cricut Easy Press Mini. This is a product that I didn't know I wanted because it didn't exist yet. But the second that I heard about it, I knew that it was going to solve a big problem for us crafters when using iron-on on small surfaces like these baby shoes. Until now, we've only had little seamstresses irons that weren't super consistent heating and now we have a tool that is even consistent heating that will allow us to make those really cute small projects like hats, wallets, baby shoes, adult shoes, really anything with a weird curve on the surface. We now have a tool that will make making these projects so much easier. So let's get started. For this project, you will need a pair of baby shoes that are a little bit heat resistant so that you can apply iron-on to them using the Cricut Easy Press Mini. I used two different colors of iron-on material and the way that you can tell this is iron-on is that it's shiny on one side and dull on the other. There is also not a gridded liner. So you'll need two colors of iron-on or heat transfer vinyl. I'll be using my Cricut Maker, so you do need a standard grit mat to apply your iron onto to run it into your machine. I suggest also having a roll of paper towel or a bean bag or small sock to place inside your shoe to prop it up so that when we apply the iron on, it has a nice sturdy surface to work on. Some extras that I do recommend, a roll of heat resistant tape, this is tape that can withstand heat and you can use it to hold your iron-on design in place while transferring. Scissors and a weeding tool are also always key to trimming down your designs and weeding them. And last but not least, the Cricut Easy Press. We will be using this little Easy Press to transfer our design onto our shoes. Before we cut our project, I wanted to show you in Design Space that I actually brought in a photo of my baby shoes so that I could use it as a background to design on so I could choose my colors, choose my size and my designs. And the way that I did that is by choosing upload and then I uploaded a pattern fill so you can bring in your photo. And once you drop in your photo, you can name it whatever image you want I've already saved it, so I'm not going to save it here, but I just called it baby shoes. And then you continue on with your upload. When you get into design space, you can drop in a shape. I used a square and then right now it's just set to cut, but you can actually choose it to print up in the upper left hand corner. And then when you click on your print type, you choose pattern. Here you can drop in your picture. And then you can edit your pattern. I rotated mine. I increased the scale. And then you can adjust it however you need to, to get it in frame. After I adjusted it, I measured how big my shoes were and I kind of just guesstimated here, but I measured to make sure that the shapes were the size that would fit on my shoes. And then I changed the color so that they would cut the colors that I wanted them to. Before you click make it, you will want to hide this layer and then click make it. Since we're cutting iron on, we will want to mirror both of our mats and then click continue. I'm using everyday iron on it, so I'll choose that. If you are on an explore machine, just turn your dial to custom and then choose everyday iron on or whatever iron on you're using. Again, it does remind you to make sure that your mirror is turned on. And when we load our material, we'll place that shiny side down on the mat. Since our designs are so small, we really only need two small scrap pieces of iron on vinyl. And when you're applying it onto your machine cutting mat, you want to make sure that the shiny side is down on the mat while the dull side faces you. Load your mat into the machine. I like to just push it against the roller slightly and hold it in place while loading. 
and then click the load button. Then click the flashing C. Load the next color in. And if you have more than two colors, just make sure that you're on the correct mat before you send it to cut. Before we weed our project, I'm going to heat up my Cricut Easy Press Mini. To find the settings I need, we're going to visit www.cricut.com slash heat guide. Here you'll find the interactive guide and we'll choose the Cricut Easy Press Mini. We are using Everyday Iron On. And I'm guessing that the shoes are a cotton poly blend. And since they're shoes, we don't really need a mat or a towel, but I'll choose mat and then we'll click apply. Here it'll tell you that we need to preheat our shoes for five seconds and then it will give you all of the settings that we need. This is what we need to pay attention to, these three little lines. There's three settings on the Easy Press Mini, and for this project, we'll be on the lowest setting. And you can see here, you have a supply list, a preparation, and an application. Before you weed your vinyl, I like to trim down my material so that I can use the rest of it for another scrap project. To weed your iron on, this is my favorite weeding tool. It just has a point on the end. And you just grab a corner from your iron on and peel it back and then gently remove the excess. Make sure to grab the insides of your shapes Once your Easy Press Mini is green, it's ready to go. So we are just going to move this around for about five seconds, like the instructions say. There isn't a timer on the Easy Press Mini, so you can just count in your head or use a standalone timer. The goal is really just to get any moisture out of the material that you're ironing onto. So it's not really important that they're hot, more that they're just no moisture in the shoe. Then we're going to put our design on the shoe. There is a little bit of tack on the liner, but I like to use heat resistant tape to really secure it so that I can line it up and make sure that it will go exactly where I want it to go. So I have this kind of angled and then I'm just going to use a generous amount of tape to really push it down into the shoe. I'm not going to add the water drops just yet. I just wanna make sure they'll fit on the shoe where I want them to be. And then now we're ready to apply. The guide says that we will press for 30 seconds. So again, there's no timer. So I'm just going to move this around for 30 seconds while counting in my head. It does call for a warm peel, but you don't wanna dive in and peel it while it's sizzling hot. So we'll let that cool down for just a little before we peel that off. We'll do the whale next. Now that this has cooled off, we'll do a warm peel. And you can see that that pressed on so easily. Now for the whale, we'll peel this off and then we'll cover it back up to apply our water drops. Super cute. So I just want to protect the whale, but I wanted to move the liner down just a bit so I could get the water drops underneath the liner. And so now I'm just going to work on pressing the little water drops and trying to really avoid the whale utilizing the tip of the Easy Press Mini, Mini to avoid that whale. We'll let that cool off. And once cool, we'll just peel everything off.
And there you have it, a custom pair of shoes with just two little scrap pieces of iron on. All right, we've made it to the end of our project and it's really that simple with the Cricut Easy Press Mini. I feel like there hasn't been a perfect tool on the market for applying iron onto shoes and other applications, small applications like backpacks or hats or anything really with an awkward curve. And I feel like the Cricut Easy Press Mini really does answer the problems that I was having with transferring iron on. A couple of things I wanted to leave you with are the importance of stuffing your shoe with something. I have tried to press without anything in the shoe and it makes it exponentially harder. So make sure that you shove some paper towel, a bean bag, or even a sock in the front of your shoe and it'll make your life so much easier. Don't forget to preheat your shoe if it's a material like cotton or polyester or canvas. It really just takes out any moisture that's in the shoe and allows the iron on to adhere so much better. So make sure you preheat if the instructions call for that. And lastly, you may have noticed that when I teach people how to use the regular Easy Press, I tell them to keep it still. But with the Easy Press, I was telling you to move it around. That is different and that was intentional. I personally like moving around the Easy Press Mini for the entire time. You do have the option to keep it in one place and then move to the next for the full amount of time. But I find it way easier to move it around the entire time. The transfer sticks beautifully and I haven't had any issues yet. So I'd love to know what you end up doing when you get your Easy Press Mini. If you are interested in buying any of the products in today's video, I did link them in the description below. And as always, I do get a small commission if you shop through those links. So I so appreciate any time you buy products through those links. If you have questions, drop, in, drop them in the comments or any social media platform that you're on. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Carly Hall and I'll see you next time.